Hello and welcome to this tutorial about my jet coaster track generator I made for No Limits 2. This tutorial consists of 9 steps. Step 1 is downloading the jet coaster generator NL2 package file. Step 2 is extracting that package file to make the files usable for yourself. Step 3 is copying a folder from the generator park to your own park to make the coaster track work there. Step 4 is downloading and installing Blender. Step 5 is downloading and installing a specific add-on that is required to import your coaster layout into Blender. Step 6 is exporting your layout from the limits. Step 7 is importing the layout into Blender. Step 8 is playing around with the generator settings to get the desired results. And step 9 is exporting the track to no limits. Step 1 Download the JetCoaster NL2 package file. You can either download it on Steam or with the link in the video description. Step 2 Open it in the editor. If you have downloaded it uh, from Steam, it will be in the Steam Workshop folder. If not, it will be in your file system and probably in downloads or maybe you've already copied it over to your uh, usual limits to pack folder. What we do then is we go to that file. It's uh, this one right here. The icon may be different. I may finish this file up or change a little bit. Um, anyway, we open it and it should look like this and then we click on file and extract package and uh, check if the path is correct. Yes, the path leads us to our usual um, pack um, folder, select that path and click OK. And now we reached step three, and that step requires us to copy over a folder from the Launtland Jet Coaster Generator Park folder to the park folder we want to use the generated custom track inside of. So um, what we need to do is we copy this folder called track. Oops. Click on copy. Go back to our no limits parks. Go to um, the park we want to use it in. So this is the my jet coaster park and we paste it in and now we can continue with step four the fourth step is to download and install blender just use any browser of your choice and go to the blender website i'm just going to search for blender and i'm going to go to the home page blender 3.5 just came out um, However, I made this generator for Blender 3.4.1 and I'm not sure if other things uh, required are compatible with Blender 3.5. So what we do is cl we click on download right here at the top and then click on previous versions. And then we can click on download every version of Blender. Then we will scroll down and we go to Blender 3.4 because we need Blender 3.4.1. So now you have all these different options for Blender 3.4.1. Just pick the one that uh, fits your system. For me, it would be the Windows 64.msi uh, file. Download that and then follow the installation instructions. Step five is downloading and installing the add-on that is required. To import your layout into Blender, you will need a specific add-on for Blender um, which can import LWO files. So what you do is you can either click on the link in the video description or you can um, just search for Blender LWO add-on and um, go to this GitHub page and uh, scroll down a bit and uh, click here on releases 
and now um, click on um, this link right here that will download um, a zip file um, just keep the zip file where it is um, don't extract it or anything we will need it as is to install the add-on we need to open blender 3.4.1 and uh, you will be greeted with a window like this um, don't worry about any of the uh, settings and all that stuff um, ignore all that we just need to click on edit preferences add-ons in this case the add-ons part is already open for me maybe it's different for you um, click on install and go to the download folder and now we scroll down and look around for a bit um, it's this file right here it's the io underscore scene underscore lwo dot zip we click on that once click on install add-on some text in this blue box will appear it will go away after a while and now we wait an extra couple of seconds Aha! Uh -huh. now um this window over here changed and all that is left to do is to click this checkbox and now we can just close with this window and proceed with the next step step six is exporting um, the coaster layout to blender and all we need to do is uh, go to the coaster tab and make sure that um, the correct coaster is selected i only have the jet coaster um, in this park i only have the coaster named jet coaster in this park um, if you have any other coasters just make sure you uh, have the correct one selected otherwise uh, a wrong layout will get exported to export the layout we need to click on advanced light pattern creator check this checkbox and click generate now navigate to um, your desired location I would recommend to export the layout uh, to a folder inside uh, the park folder so i'm just going to click on park base to go um, to the folder i want to and um, i've already have this layout folder prepared i would recommend you to um, also make a folder maybe name it layout give it whatever name you want um, we click on this um, folder click select uh, I had already previously uh, generated um, the layout once, so this message pops up and it wants me about um, overriding, overwriting, and it wants me about overwriting some files. I'm fine with that, so I'm just going to click yes. Um, if you haven't generated uh, the layout in there before, um, it won't ask you um, to do anything um, after clicking select um, the window will just go away now with the layout exported and all the files transferred we can finally generate the custom track all that is left to do is um, to open the blend file and import the layout opening the blend file is quite easy you just click on file and then open and in case um, this message pops up uh, click on don't save and then navigate to the LaunchLimbs Jet Coaster Generator Park folder. Uh, for me, this is pre-selected for some reason. Um, so I can just double click on this Jet Coaster Track Generator.blend file. This is where the magic happens. And now we have this file. Um, to import our layout, um, all we need to do is click on this box right here that says Light Pattern Object. Just select um, this and now, we will, and now you will see that there is an outline surrounding that box. That is quite important. Next up, we click on File and Import and on LWO right here at the bottom, Lightwave, Lightwave Object LWO. If this does not appear, you must have made a mistake during the add-on installation. Um, this is uh, something that isn't supported by Blender um, by default. And that's what we need to be add-on for. Um, so click on this and now navigate to the park 
uh, your coaster is in. So in my case, that's in documents in B No Limits 2 Parks. And B Park was called my jet coaster. And I exported my layout to this layout folder. And uh, there are a lot of files here. The only important one is this outpack underscore obj under, uh, dot lwo. Double click that. Now Blender tells us it's looking for some image for some reason. I don't know why. We can just click OK and then click this cancel search box and then click select image search path. And suddenly there is a custom track magically appearing out of thin air. Now, don't be scared if this does not happen for you because A, the track might be there and you just can't see it because it is out of view. Or B, if you've made a mistake, you can just go back and uh, check if you've done everything correctly. Um, now, if it is not visible, it might just be out of view. To change the view, you uh, click the middle mouse button to rotate around. Um, you can scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And you can left click on this hand button right here to, to move around. So you can turn and move like this, for example. If your layout is out of view, um, that's probably because it's um, in a specific spot in your park. You can see the spot in the middle here where the two axes meet. Um, in no limits, um, that spot is the center of the park. So you can see this uh, position of the layout is exactly uh, in the same spot where it is in Blender. And let's say your layout was like maybe all the way over there and maybe you placed it on a mountain so it's quite high up, like maybe there. You just wouldn't see it in Blender and um, that's the reason why it is missing. Um, because it, it isn't actually missing, it's just out of view. If it is really far away, I have added a, a preview mode that centers the track um, around um, the center of the world. So even if it is really far away in the limits, um, you can just easily view it um, from where you start on the file. Speaking of uh, changing settings, um, to change any settings, and there are a lot of settings you can change, um, you need to click on this settings object here on the right. Click on this once and you will see that uh, there are a bunch of settings. There is this um, preview option. Um, it's set to zero right now because um, that means it's not activated. Um, setting it to one, as I said, centers um, the layout around uh, the world origin to make it uh, more easy to see. In this case, it doesn't really do much, but uh, maybe your layout is far away, like I said. And that will make it quite a bit easier to um, to use. So uh, keeping it like this, we can now take a better look at the custom track and maybe change some stuff we like to change. The way the settings are right now are the default settings. Um, if you just want to um, get it in the game like this, uh, there is nothing you need to change. Um, but there's a lot of stuff you can change if you want to. And here are all the things you can change. Um, the first setting is the rail gouge. So that means how big the distance between the rails is. So, um, so this setting is in meters. And um, since it says 0 0.8, it uh, gets interpreted as 80 centimeters. So um, if you uh, want to uh, make the track work for a different coaster type that has um, uses a wider rail for by default. You can lower the rail gouge all the way to zero <laughs> to make a single rail coaster if that's what you want, but um, there is no limit to how large it can be. All right. The next setting is the tie spacing that is also in meters. And that means the uh, distance between the red ties. So you can increase that or decrease that however you like. It's uh, currently, uh, the low setting is currently 
uh, 0.1 meters um, that would be this density anything lower um, would a let the ties overlap uh, which doesn't make much sense and b um, the amount of ties would get so big uh, that you may run into performance problems and we don't want that so um, the default setting is 0.9 so 90 centimeter spacing um, maybe you want it to be a little bit larger maybe like 1.4 meters maybe that looks good um, it's up to you when we also had the tie width um, that's just uh, the setting uh, that changes how long they are also in meters so the default setting is 1.2 so it's 1.2 meters long and next up we have the banked tie offset um, the banked tie offset means um, where these uh, supporting ties um, that support uh, the curve string banking um, are positioned along the um, main tie. So the minimum value is zero um, because it makes no sense to support the curve rather further on the left um, than the center. So um, the minimum value is uh, the center of the track and uh, there is no maximum you could even extend uh, them past the uh, normal ties so the default value is 0 0.5 because that looks quite nice the next setting is um, the bank tie support extra length um, that just means um, how far um, the ties extend past the uh, blue spines right here default setting is uh, 16 centimeters so 0 0.16 and uh, that's it next up we have the spine settings and um, spine settings uh, is actually just one setting and that's the spine spacing um, that just um, sets how far these um, blue metal um, blocks are apart I think I added 1.1 and then we have the catwalk settings. Oh no, this generator um, does not support um, custom catwalks. Um, these might get added in the future or maybe as a separate generator. However, there is the center catwalk and this one has quite a few uh, things you can change. Um, if you don't want the center catwalk, you can just disable it by um, setting this uh, use center catwalk value to zero. That makes it disappear and you don't need to bother with it. But if you want it, um, you could decide whether or not um, you want um, this mesh to um, bank with a track or not. Um, I think it's banked on all the examples I've seen on uh, real life jet coasters. However, to me, it makes more sense as a catwalk to be straight so you don't like, fall off easily. Um, so if you don't want it to be banked, um, you can just set this um, banked unbanked value to one and suddenly it will be perfectly straight everywhere. Um, the catwalk width um, does exactly um, what it says. Um, it allows you to make the catwalk wider um, or thinner. And um, obviously the minimum value here is zero. And um, when we have the vertical offset, that allows you to move it up and down. And uh, maybe you want to have it between the ties maybe you want it above um, that's up to you and then we have the catwalk wobble the catwalk wobble is um, not in meters it is um, a strength um, value and um, as you can see the catwalk isn't perfectly in the center this uh, line right here um, shows where the center of the track is and it wobbles back and forth the catwalk because it 
just isn't made that high quality or uh, that precise in real life so um, these just are kind of wobbly um, you can increase this value of course to make it really wobbly and uh, you could also apply a negative value to make it wobble in the other direction to um, turn the effect off you can just enter zero in the catwalk wobble and it will be perfectly straight point four i think was the default so these are all the settings you can change um i think it's quite a lot um to customize and uh, it will allow for quite a few different um uh, results like like i demonstrated you could make a single rail by setting the rail gauge to zero um make the catwalk maybe wider and uh, quite a bit lower and um, make the spine spacing not as big and the tie width it's as well and inset the the offset banking pieces a little bit as well and suddenly you have a completely different looking track that um, still works quite nicely. Um, don't worry about the colors by the way, uh, they are just to um, differentiate each part in Blender and they do not have any effect on how you can color it in No Limits 2. And now the last step, exporting the track. To do that you just click somewhere in this 3D uh, view, um, click and drag and drag across the track. Now everything gets selected and now we can export. Um, to do that we click on File, on Export, on Collada, click right here on Selection Only, and in this Geometry tab, click on Apply Modifiers. Then we go to um, the park we want to export it to. Um, my jet coaster red is, and uh, click the track folder and click on jetcoaster.vae. Now we have exported the track and we can go back to No Limits. Inside No Limits we just click on Scenery, click on Choose and uh, we are in the park base right here so this is the My Jet Coaster Park. Um, click on Track, click on Jet Coaster Track on OK and click on add object right here, place it and suddenly we have this awesome track. Uh, now we just need to center it on the layout. To do that we double click it um, and set the X, Y and Z position to zero. Yeah we are all zero and um, as you can see, everything is white, and now we can change the individual colors. Um, so we can choose the color for the rails. We can choose a different color for the spine if we want to. We could make it really colorful and ugly. And um, maybe like some purple for the catwalk. Now this looks awful, but I think that's just in the spirit of some jet coasters. If you want to make it more realistic, um, you could probably just change it all to like some brownish color, I guess. It's a bit rusted away. All right, um, now you just need to make your coaster track invisible. I think I've already done that in here. Nope, I did not. Um, so just select everything, go to style settings in the track tab, click on invisible segment, click on OK, and freeze. And now you have um, track. 
and uh, we can take a ride. Here we are. As you can see, everything um, works. It looks exactly like uh, the settings we had in Blender. And um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say for the tutorial. Let's just enjoy this little ride. And that's all from my side. Thanks for watching and have fun making your own jet coasters.